Hey guys, welcome to The Prince Eats. In this video, we're talking tips and tricks for the easiest red wine braised short ribs you'll ever make. If you enjoy this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. For this video, we're going to slow it down a bit. If you remember the first video I did for red wine braised short ribs, it was quick fire, and we really didn't get into the elements of this dish that makes it so special and exceptional. Here's a clip from that video. To watch this video, you can click the icon at the top right of the screen and then right click on that pop up and open the window in a new tab. We'll talk about certain ingredients and how you can make this dish a hit every time. The first important step that you want to make sure to accomplish at the beginning of this recipe is to make sure you trim and remove as much of the fat away from the short ribs as possible. The more fat you remove now just means you're going to have a lighter presence of fat renderings at the end of the cooking process. Right before you're ready to brown your short ribs, you're going to salt them generously with some kosher salt. And don't be shy with the salt because you're going to lose some of it anyway when you drain away some of the renderings after you brown the beef. This recipe calls for dry red wine. I recommend using a Cabernet Sauvignon, but you really can opt for any dry red wine that you prefer. Just use one that you're familiar with. Opt for a full flavor beef stock. It's going to flavor the pot and at the same time reduces the amount of salt you have to add into the pot as well. For aromatics, you have the big three. That's the thyme, rosemary, and the bay leaf. These three work well together and is a must for this dish. In my opinion, garlic is non-negotiable and you really can load up on it as much as you want. Tomato paste is going to give you that deep tomato flavor without the taste of tomato sauce. Adding mushroom is optional, however, it does add more flavor to the pot and around day three or four when all of the meat is finished and you want to stretch that sauce out for another day, those mushrooms give you a meatless option. Since we're only browning the meat for a short period of time, you can use olive oil, however, I recommend using an oil with a high smoke point. Here I'm using avocado oil. It's very versatile and perfect for this rib recipe. When you're ready to go, you want to make sure that your pan is very hot. Uh, in order to get that color that we're familiar with when we brown or sear meats, you really need to make sure that your pan is hot. Depending on what kind of pan or pot you're using, I recommend starting out with high heat at first, and then right before you add your meat into the pan, maybe reduce the heat down to medium high or just right below high heat. Here's another tip. Don't overcrowd the pan with the short ribs. When you crowd the pan, that heat fluctuates and one of three things can happen. One, it takes you a little bit longer to cook the meat. Two, you probably won't get that dark brown color that you expect from browning the meat. And three, you run the risk of overcooking the meat. If you're using bone-in short ribs, cook the meat side down. Five to eight minutes is good enough to brown this meat. Afterwards, remove the meat and set it to the side. You'll notice there's some caramelization on the bottom of the pan. That's really good. That's called fawn. You've probably heard that before. But there's a lot of flavor trapped in the bottom of that pan that we're going to use to our benefit. One thing that I like to do before deglazing the pan is toasting my garlic on that caramelization at the bottom of the pan. After about three to five minutes, you can remove the garlic heads. Uh, here you can see it has a little bit of color. You can leave the whole cloves in the pan. At this point, the bottom of the pan is going to be quite dry. So we can add a little bit of olive oil and we're going to sweat out our onions for approximately three to five minutes. Depending on the size of your pot, you're going to add half to a whole teaspoon of flour and this will serve as a thickening agent. Add in your tomato paste and allow that to fry for approximately five minutes. You really want to let that tomato paste cook so that you can release that deep tomato flavor. Next you can pour in your red wine and let that simmer for about 10 minutes or until the strong smell of alcohol dissipates. After cooking down your wine you want to pour in your full flavor beef stock. I recommend using full flavor beef stock because again uh, it keeps you from having to add any extra salt to the dish. Bring that to a simmer and then add in your herbs. You can go ahead and submerge the herbs right below the surface of the sauce. Believe it or not, we're almost done with the active cooking part of this recipe. And this next step is essentially just adding the beef to the pot. If you're using bone-in short ribs, you want to make sure to 
Place the beef into the pan meat side down and bone side up. Place those half garlic heads cut side down into the pot. If you're using mushrooms, now's the time to add them to the pot. Cover and place in an oven preheated at 350 degrees for two to two and a half hours. And once you're done, you'll be looking at a tender beef dish that you can diversify over a few days with some uh, cheesy risotto, mashed potatoes, or even rice. The flavor of the sauce is so rich and the beef itself is so tender. It makes you want to savor every bite. Here's another tip. You can remove some of that clear liquid that's at the top of the pan. Essentially what that is is fat that's rendered from the beef. I like to remove just a little bit so that I have a better consistency of sauce. And you're done. Red wine braised short ribs done the easy way and the right way. It will be a hit every time. Dinner is served. Visit theprinceeats.com for more simple and easy meal ideas just like this one.